What a glorious October Monday in Columbus, Ohio. Welcome into the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It is a fun, casual joint, and we are going to have the most fun, casual chat that you have ever heard. Ohio State beats Maryland 37-17. to That is Justin Zwick. He's back from his wilderness walkabout. <laughs> Bradley Robinson is back for week two. He did so well, he earned a, a cameo. Or a, yeah, I love it. An encore. That's whatever. Whatever it is, he's back. And we're, he's going to talk about special teams because that's We've got it really covered. on my mind. And Nicole Cox is right here. I think you predicted 37-17, to 17, didn't you? I, I right predicted. On the nose? I, what was my pick? 42-14. I think, I think 42, you had it, 14 you was had my it covered. Pick. So just about the way you expected. Pretty close to what I had, yeah. which was 41-17. I had 45-17. So, um, 92.3. So the game plays out just about the way that we thought. And yet there's some... People upset about it. It wasn't perfect. The first half was ugly. And then Ohio State still dominates in the second. So, Brad, how do you feel about it? Uh, what are you, what's on your heart right now about this game? So I have a different perspective now than I used to have before. Before I'd be arguing with people like, oh, it was better than it is. And I, I still think the game was better than the way everyone's treating it. Uh, obviously, I love Buckeye Nation, but we have some uh, some hardcore fans that will share their opinions. Uh, I kind of I look at it to tell two halves, um, more tail of first quarter and then the next three quarters. Sure. Um, the fourth quarter was great. They covered, so that's a big deal for a lot of people. They care about that. And the special teams did yeah. execute to get that done. <laughs> yeah. So, so mm-hmm. yeah, nice. Jaden Jaden crushed it. Three field goals. Um, so mm-hmm. he, he he looked good. He's looking good. Yeah. So special teams. We'll we'll start with that. Um, interesting, interesting spot to start with the with the. I would I guess it's a muff snap. Um, what it was told in the press conference was that it slipped out of. John's hands and John's a good snapper. I've seen really good things out of him. Uh, it's it's just one of those things he's got to find a way to mentally lock down and, and figure out what's going on, what's what's different. I know he's he's an Arizona guy, so maybe the hey. the fifty five degree fall weather had something to do with well, it. Well, you better get yeah. used to it. Because There's some rain down there, wasn't yeah. there? During not, the game? not not not, 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 that not that point. Point. Yeah. Yeah. I was trying to help. Yeah. The ball would still be wet. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Uh, no, the worst one is actually the really hot games, and the running back will score a touchdown, and then you'll get like this ball back from the ref, and it's just like it'll be like uh, Mike Weber was the one who's always sweaty, and it was just, you got a nice sweaty ball back, you got to <laughs> snap it. Me and Liam would make jokes about that, but yeah, so he it just he said it slipped out, and I think the biggest thing with that is special teams is a momentum changer, and I mean our defenses look great all year, but you have a three and out that ends at that with and you're giving the ball back to Maryland, who's got a really good offense and a great quarterback. I wasn't surprised when they scored a touchdown there. Would love to see a field goal. Jay-Z mm-hmm. was talking about that earlier. But it's just such a big momentum changer, especially because it's not just – it's not like you went for a fake and didn't get it. So that's the mentality on the sidelines over there. The mentality on the sidelines is probably like, <laughs> what's going on now? And, the def- and, and most of the guys on punt team play defense. Yeah. So they're all now like, all right, now we got to lock in. So there's a lot of – High strung there, but definitely it's a really tough spot to start. And you could tell that combined with Maryland's touchdown crushed momentum for that entire first quarter. Yeah, I guess I hadn't really thought about it from that perspective. Like if the defense is expecting aggression and mm-hmm. like, all right, well, they're putting trust in us to go get yeah. the stop. That may be different than uh, a miscue on that front. I think the other part that was frustrating for me was just the, the other penalties in that first half mm-hmm. on special teams. One on a punt, one where it d- didn't even look like they were set. To go after a punt block, and then you get called for a hold on a fair catch. It was just, it was a disaster. And if you're paying somebody half a million dollars to coordinate the special teams, you you want them to be coordinated. You'd like to see that happen. All right, so that's an, we don't have to keep talking about special teams. There's a lot of other there's things. one more with the muffed punt okay, that see. we had an opportunity for. And um, I heard someone in the stands because I was there yelled like, "How they not get the ball?" John, the snapper, actually did a really good job. Ball bounced out. His job is to, as a snapper, your job is to hit the returner so he can't get back to the ball. The problem was the other three or four guys in coverage were just jogging because they saw the fair catch, and then the ball was rolling around, and we didn't get it, mm-hmm. where you still have to finish the play. And it's hard, It's a mental hard thing to see a fair catch, but you still have to finish the play. And that, I thought, would have been – if we if that had happened, that flip would have been – and the game would have been completely different. Wow. So I only had – Three special teams issues when I was upset on Saturday, and it turns <laughs> yeah. out it was four. So there's, there's that's more. why you're here. You can, you can keep finding that's more. Nice. So. Uh, I don't yeah. want to. I really yeah. don't want to. Yeah, we don't. We don't like I, to talk about special yeah. teams that much. Because and and especially after last year, like I'm trying to be better about the positives, and I just thought that there were a lot more positives in that win and winning by 20 over Maryland <laughs> than there were negatives. Right, Nicole? I agree. I agree. I am a little surprised at how long it took us to kind of get into the swing of things. I really. Like, very surprised. I just thought we'd look better, but it happens. You know, we were, I guess, just off the bye week. We'll remember for next year, as we were talking last week about, is Ryan Day good off a bye week? Mm-hmm. It, it 
they I think it did kind of have a little bit of a effect on the performance a little bit um you could see the confidence in McCord at the beginning and then you know things just were kind of spiraling down a little bit and then but then we had guys that picked it up for everyone which was great Jay-Z how'd you feel on Saturday Uh, and how do you feel now is it different with two days to think about it (laughs) yes I mean it was different after I saw the box a lot of conviction in that if, if you look at the box score Kyle McCord had a great day, 19 to 29, 320 yards, career high for him, uh, no interceptions, two touchdowns. If you'd have told me that before the game, I'd be like, yeah, he probably looked pretty good today. He didn't look very good, though. Uh, I mean, in the second half, he definitely, 80% completion, I think. You know, he, he seems to get better as games go on, even mm-hmm. when it doesn't go right in the first quarter, which as a, you know, a young quarterback, I, I think that's very impressive to be able to pull himself up and, all right, listen, it wasn't great, doesn't look good, but – we got playmakers. We we got to keep going, and we got to figure a way out uh, to make this happen. I, and I think he did that. Um, it just didn't. I mean, is I don't know if it was really windy down there. The ball looked like it wasn't floating out of his hand like it typically does. He has a strong arm mm-hmm. uh, for him to miss a couple of those deep ones. Now he didn't miss them. They still caught him, mm-hmm. which is better than an incompletion, right? Uh, but you just those are touchdowns, sure. and you you expect him with his arm strength to make those. Uh, I don't know if he was just being. I don't know if Maryland came out and said, "Hey, we want to take the short stuff away and." You know, stop the run and make it hard on him. I mean, I felt for him because every second down, I felt like we ran ran the ball, and it wasn't it wasn't going good. We were about one one yard of carry in the first half, I think. And the game gets slow. And so, what does that, that do to a quarterback? Is second down is also like okay, what's well, probably going to be stretched into the boundary. So, well, oh god, yeah, jeez, I, mean, I know this is incredible. But you keep putting this young quarterback in a third and long, that that wears on him. Even though he, he against Notre Dame. Awesome on third and fourth down. Yeah, but you don't want to just. All right, we're, we'll be okay. Third and long all the time. That's that's not easy for for an offense to uh, you know get those first downs you know consistently. So I, I, we got to figure that out. We didn't put them in great spots. It ended up being a twenty point win. Big Ten team, I'll take it. You yeah. know, all you got to do is survive in advance, and, and that's what it is. Uh, you know, people get bent out of shape because it doesn't look great. What would these people have done in two thousand two? I mean, give me a break. You know, like. Yeah. You're not even old enough to remember 2002, but <laughs> I was fine. Like, I mean, it's like, oh, if they would have went, <laughs> if they would have went through that, see, I know, right? What a reaction! Of it. Oh. He thought I was just joking, but yeah, he yeah. barely was alive when I was there. I was okay. also, I was not an Ohio State fan. I'm from the north, yeah. so yeah, fair I, enough. I, didn't, I didn't learn yet. Yeah, but I mean, it's just think how that would be going right now. We're just so used to scoring 45, 60 points and just blowing people out that a 20 point win feels like a loss, or you know, people want to be upset about it because it didn't look great. The fact is, we got a young team. We're still figuring the offensive line out. I thought they would look better coming out of the bye week, going against the Maryland team that I, I didn't think they were going to give us much uh, defensively, anyways. And they looked bad. I mean, just start running. Maryland's our, a decent team. Though, no, I'm not, yeah. I don't. I don't mean to yeah. take away anything. I think they are a good team. Uh, I think the teams. Well, I don't think I know the teams they played prior to us. Combined record of five and fifteen. So they weren't playing great competition. Maryland always does this. I feel like they get to four zero. They come out strong, they look good, they have the numbers, and then they get into Big Ten play, and it kind of goes downhill. Now, they have two wins in the Big Ten. I'm not saying that they're going to lose every game here on out. I think they do have a decent team, but I thought our offensive line, I thought our offense would look much more crisp coming out sure. in that first quarter, and it just wasn't there, and it looked like, what the heck have we been doing for two weeks? It uh, didn't seem like we were preparing all that well here, and the offensive line got to figure it out because sooner or later that's going to bite us. I, I have a feeling. We'll come back to that. I mean, we have to talk about some of the things that can still be improved as Ohio State gets ready for Purdue on Saturday. We'll talk about that offensive line later in the show. But before we do that, Nicole has to kick us off with some Roosters Buckeye leaves. Yes. So um, I, it took a minute to pick who I wanted. <laughs> but it was there looking, were still plenty of options on the table. Yes, but but um, I'm going to pick Lathan Ransom and Josh Proctor. Obviously, mm-hmm. I know they had the interceptions. Josh Proctor with the pick six, which was mm-hmm. incredible, which really jump-started the game. It gave the guys the confidence, like, okay, here we go. We've got it. And you need kind of that push start to get to get it. So, um, and then Lathan Ransom, I just felt like these guys really stepped up when everyone, when everybody need, needed yep. them. Um, they were on point. They were where they needed to be. And just, you know, Lathan going up for the interception, just, you know, going up the ladder, elevating his body, grabbing Ooh. that. It was, it was nice. Mm, it was ladder. very nice. Mm-hmm. Up the ladder. He was. I did. 
I did. I pulled this out, guys. The last Great. couple of weeks, she's been adding to the lexicon. I love it. I know. Here. Little, I little by little. Yeah. You know, little steps. by little. Yeah. But That's, um, are they it, saying that on Madden? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, I just have to rewind it a bunch of times as I listen to the commentators. <laughs> yeah. You know how that goes. But sure, take down the one-liners. Yeah, yeah. but um, no, I don't want to listen to the commentators. <laughs> yeah, this Gus is terrible. Ha <laughs> 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 Anyway. So I'm not going to say that, but they, I will. I have no problem saying. I, it. I also watched him spill coffee on himself on Saturday in the press box, and then berate a kid for getting it on his white coat. Gus, you walked into that guy anyway. Now, yeah, <laughs> and you know I don't like that. Yeah. I don't like when anybody gets upset with anybody else for an accident happening. So, um, but I also think just their improvement from last year, and just you know they had a huge game. They were Big Ten Player of the Game last week. Latham was, and then after Notre Dame, yep, yeah, thirteen tackles just, in that game. So. I, I'm just really proud of them for just kind of stepping up, especially at, with the mistakes that were made last year and kind of seeing them grow into their own. And Josh could have left this year. Sure and could so have. Mm-hmm. he stayed. For most of the year was planning to uh, yeah. leave, as a matter of fact. So. And I just feel like his performance has been great. I'm really impressed. Safety-driven defense. Drink. Brad, who you got? Uh, not to be unoriginal, but I went in with Josh. I've Josh is one of my close friends I've known for years, and I'm just – this is what I've always known him to one be of capable all, one of. One of the only people as old yeah. as you. <laughs> so, yeah, I saw, like, the stat. Going back to Purdue, there's two people left on the team. I was also at that wonderful night in West Lafayette. Uh, mm. That was not a great time, not a good memory. But I saw the stat, him and Matt Jones. But, yeah, so Josh is great. We always – he was 41, I was 42, so we always were next to each other in the locker room with different things. And this is what I know he's capable of, what he's played this season, and it's, it makes me so happy as a friend to see that. But I'm glad everybody else is noticing it. But I'm gonna add Sonny Styles into that mm-hmm. because I, I mean he's a safety, but he's not. He the way he was coming up in the run, Lathan also does a good job. But all three of them are really hard hitters, and it reminds me of seeing how strong the safety unit is. You go back to like Jordan Fuller. Jordan Fuller yeah. was a blanket back there that nothing got by, and it was a big staple of the defense, the safety driven defense. And the way they've been playing this year in the run game, I think you see it a lot help because there's been a lot of comments about the linebackers struggling and. I haven't even noticed as much because I think the safeties are doing such a good job coming up and making plays. Mm-hmm. I, I There's countless times where I see Lathan, Sonny, and Proctor just come up and make a play at the line of scrimmage, and they're very physical doing it. And then there's the stuff in coverage like Josh, Josh's pick six probably saved us a lot in the momentum game because mm-hmm. we had zero momentum. It yep. was dead in the stadium. <laughs> Sideline looked dead. That really changed things, and I think that's what helped us to ultimately get the 20-point win, which everyone forgets that we, we still won by 20. Yeah. We could do probably a full hour on the Josh Proctor episode here, just like yeah. as long as Brad has known him. Uh, you know, I went down to Owasso to do a story on him when he was getting recruited. That was now six years ago and met you know him and his family. And like, uh, I've, I've known him a really long time. And I, you know, the stuff that he's been through, mm-hmm. aside from the injuries, but also the coaching changes, personnel overhaul, the whole deal, like, Everyone has believed that this was going to happen at some point, but then you were just like, "Well, that's five years. That's the that's yeah. it. It's not going to happen." That's why I didn't even talk about the injuries. Like everyone thought this was going to be this. What this is how jo- year two, year three, Josh Proctor looked, and then just dude got hit with injury mm-hmm. after injury. But he's just kept working, and, and now it's paying <laughs> off, and I'm happy to see it. Yeah, yeah, you love seeing any of those guys who go yeah. through that kind of stuff and just stick it out and continue mm-hmm. to fight and continue to believe. You know, so it's great. I, I think he definitely gets a, a Buckeye Leaf uh, game changing play. In my opinion, I mean, that was the momentum shifter. He talked about mm-hmm. it. Uh, you know, I think that woke the entire stadium up. And like, hey, all right, we do have a game here today and we are going to play. And all right, this is a good one to get to get us going. Uh, so I, I think him, I'm going to give a shout out, not a Buckeye leaf, Caden Curry. I thought um, no stats or anything, but I thought there's a couple plays. He had the one, he got, got the big paw on the, uh, on the one throw there, but that was just a hustle play. I mean, you, you watch it, he was back, he looped around, up, 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 and you know, and he makes a play, figures it out. Um, so a young guy getting out there, getting some run, and I thought in some decently big spots too. So they, I think they're starting to trust him a little bit. Um, maybe see some more him out of him uh, at you know with the year to go. Um, the the end rotation you're a big fan of. Well, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I think I think there needs to be a little bit of rotation this year. That's the <laughs> that's the issue. <laughs> wow. But uh, before Brad's I let you in, think on that, Brad's out here just. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna go look, over there on that side of the table. I mean. I, I don't believe that you can go through a full season the way that they did with Jack Sawyer and JT Tumola to, to playing every single every snap the way they did at Notre Dame. Now, JT was still very fresh and, and finished that game with two of the biggest plays against Notre Dame. Mm-hmm. I think part of the issue for me when I'm saying that right now that's probably more necessary is that it looks like to me, and I am not Larry Johnson and I'm not one of the most respected position coaches in the history of college football, that 
Caden Curry and Kenyatta Jackson are doing something and providing something that is different than Jack Sawyer. So why that is, how that is, I mean, I'll leave it up to the experts to decide. It feels like there is a different energy to your point, Jay-Z, when Caden Curry is out there. And you look in the stat sheet and it didn't really show no. up. It felt different. Yeah. And some of the plays were different. Well, I started thinking... Did Jack even play? Because I don't. You know, there wasn't a yeah. time where he jumped off the screen at me, and I, you know, so His then I had to look up and, off and, one and he had he had three assists, you know. Yeah. But it's just like I, I started thinking, like, well, hold on, was he? Did he play? I don't remember him being hurt. But there was one where he missed the contain pretty bad, where uh, Tolua yep. uh, got mm-hmm. got it on the edge. But Caden, I think it's like like you said, he's not showing up on the stat sheet. But if you watch it and you're a football fan, you're going to see that high motor and that effort. That. And it's going to be a matter of time whether it happens as the season goes on or next year. Like I don't know where it's going to be. One of those like he's people are going to see it. Like we we see it, but then all of a sudden it's going to snap and be in that statue. Well, and then the eye in the sky don't lie. So I mean, yeah. there's well, been times where I'm watching 33 and it's like man, he's slow off the ball. It doesn't look like there's a lot of energy there. And then I went to I went to do that again in this game, and oh, that's 92. Yeah. There's some energy coming off that. You know, like. Mm-hmm. Okay, so there's there are, there are some differences out there, and and not that Jack can't turn it around and get it going, but uh, you and, know, just a little different energy. Maybe. And that's more my question. Like Larry Johnson hasn't been available since August, so we haven't had a chance to talk to him and his evaluation. Like they may they may feel like Jack is giving exactly what they want, mm-hmm. and they didn't take him out of the rotation at all at Notre Dame, and they trusted him to do that assignment. Like if that's that's how they feel, that's the confidence in that. You know, fine, so be it. They they won the game and they gave up 14 points. They won again on Saturday. Uh, and after that opening drive and defending a short field, it was just 10 points for yeah, Maryland. Yeah. Very explosive offense through five weeks. So it's not even that I'm coming from it from a perspective that it's a problem because I don't know that it is. Defense but I, is playing great. I think the potential when you put Caden Curry, because he's somebody that I talked about a lot on Saturday, and I, I feel like <clears throat> it, it, it was hard to, like, well, how are you going to give him a buck? I leave. What stats do you have to back yeah. that up? Like, I, I don't have it. That's why I gave it a shout feels, out. Yeah. It just I like that. feels <laughs> different. Yeah. It when, yeah. And maybe I'm, maybe no, I'm, I'm with wrong, you, man. But, like, Either Larry or Jim Knowles, like, what do you see and how could that change the plan or the rotation moving forward? It is not that I think they need to go back to playing four or five guys all the time because mm-hmm. I definitely don't think that. But it's it gotta, does you got to find like, the right four. Like, or, or the right and JT rotations, just right? seem similar to mm-hmm. me and what that they're what they're asking them to do, and I don't know that that fully unlocks the potential. But if the goal is don't give up explosives. Yeah. Don't give up twenty points in a game. Well, they're checking those boxes. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. the crazy thing. I think. I think. Yeah. They're I think playing. Jack and JT are very similar. And as much as it pains me to say, I'm a Lions fan, and the Lions are looking great. They're moving Aiden Hutchinson around, and I kind of could see that with Jack. Where like go back to our old Rushman packages sure. back in the day. Put Jack in the middle there on a third and long, and like put him Mike, against the guard. Mike, he's yeah. going to be the guard every e- time. Exactly, and he's got the length too to just get a hand up in the way of the quarterback. And then mm-hmm. Ty Leak and Mike Hall and all the D tackles move him around because they're still they're, they're getting pressure no matter where they're at so move it around and add that package back into it because his length and uh, uh athleticism that jack has he'll destroy a guard in the center and i'd like to see that from the middle i'm gonna give uh some buckeye leaves to mike hall and tyleek williams not for anything statistically but for the fact that they have not punched an official this year i give them a lot of credit for that because yeah. berm's got <laughs> they're missing a lot some great photos that are showing pretty clearly it's incredible what is illegal according to the <laughs> rules of football? Yeah. Uh, I mean, pads fully exposed on one of the photos that Berm oh, has. For, the, the touchdown, the scramble. And, and give me a, the guy standing right there looking at. I him. don't know what Tyreek Williams is supposed to do. No. You know, Steel Chambers missed a tackle after that, but he probably didn't think he was going to have to make one to, because yeah. there was, if not for a mm-hmm. hold, that hole would not have existed. I don't know how it is legal every year to just hold Ohio State defensive linemen. I mean, I can't imagine what it's like to be. In those film study sessions throughout the week, and they're like, "Well, what was it? What else was I supposed to do?" Yeah. And then you've seen it every, other games throughout the year, like, "Okay, well, the Big Ten apologized, but Marvin that should have been a touchdown against yeah. Indiana yeah. or the next week." Do they the hate us? What is the, I, I what is the deal? Just, it's because if there's a chance that we did something, they throw the flag on the on the pick six. Ah, that block. Uh, let's throw the flag. Just we'll, we'll talk go back about and look later. at it. Uh, there's another one during the game, the Ryan Day thing. Yeah, it's just like. Every little chance they get, I feel like we get the flag, and then you see a blatant holding call on a touchdown run, in, and there's nothing. It's the illegal motion. That yeah, the, thrown, yeah, that was the other one. Yeah, it yeah. was thrown extremely late, and then you watched. Yeah, the, he was the in the, the end zone with the ball, yeah. and the guy's throwing the flag. Yeah. Like, it's, I would it's love to, to know what happened. Like, it, this might be a grudge from God knows how this. long ago. The it's, uh, it's the, the t- commentators of the game did mention on the Joel, Joel said, "I don't know what Ryan and that 
sideline judge have going on down there, but it's not looking good. Like I mean, he he made like I don't know what these calls are. I feel yeah. like there've been a lot more opportunities where Emeka Ibuka is going in motion, and he does look like he has some forward momentum. Yeah. That was not the case on Xavier. Ike was definitely stopped. His shoulders were square. That's yeah. what they say. Like oh, he's not square. He's leaning. No, he was stopped and square yes. for a couple right. steps. I don't understand. So, great job to <clears throat> Ryan Day and the Buckeyes for now. Hey, I have one more Buckeye lead well, I'd him. like to give out. Let's go, Schlegs. Hit him up. Marvin Harrison Jr. Ooh. I think you should. Nicole did not game. want me to give him one. I, that is not the case It doesn't at all. appear that, is not the that case. 163. He looked great. He is, looked great he, this hey, game. She's gonna, battling through an ankle. Probably didn't need to play against Maryland. I can Maryland. feel the heat radiating off of no. her. She does not. He goes out Jay-Z for. Right. I mean, that should, yeah. he should have had two hundred plus if if Kyle puts that ball if he gets it out yeah. when he should have got it out. Yeah, you know that's another fifty yards right there. Right. It was windy. A little windy, but great game. The the catch on the sideline. I mean, the guy continues to make make plays. The, the diving one at Notre Dame. Yep. The one on the sideline for a big first down. He had a great game. As advertised, he great. Would, <laughs> is my been, guy, Marvin would, Harris. Would have been tempting to just not play at all. If you're protecting, That's what I, if you're why the best play him? Yet. You know, we could get by without him, probably. Could we have? Yeah. I think we'd have been all right. Well, he was pretty important to this win. As I was going to say, but, he, I know, but, he had a lot But somebody, we have, we have a lot of good athletes in that room. We do. We do. But he, he definitely showed up 100%. when we needed him. I mean, Which, he really helped with the momentum of the game yeah. and... Um, he looked great, and it seemed like him and McCord had a good, you know, just relationship of trusting each other with everything. So, yeah, they did. What I, I think it's now 38 career touchdowns between those two dating exactly. back to high school. It's, it's awesome. It's pretty wild. We'll check with Bill. He knows everything about the Philadelphia Catholic League. So, with this Phillies hat on the day. 38, I love it. <laughs> 38 career touchdowns now for those two. 38. Oh, yeah. One awesome. got taken away. So oh, what do 30, we have yeah. there? Well, what do we have there, Austin? Well, there's a QR code on here, Jay-Z. What do you think trip. that QR code does? It's the Buckeyes Bowl Trip yeah. giveaway. The, what is that? It's for <laughs> Rooster's Bowl Trip giveaway. Well, Bob's, hey, Bob's hey. the one who's got the script, not me. We've got well, it. let me tell you, we get <laughs> the QR code. You scan it's it. On the it's screen. on the screen. Yes. And what that comes with, you get to put your name in to yes. be drawn one of seven for this next game, right? Yes. Because you already drew yes. for yeah. So, I'm in, well, I'm drawing today. No, you're drawing yeah. today, but this will go in for next week. Beating Purdue what is would, it? would qualify Ohio State for a bowl game, which is very important. Oh, so you yes. get to go to a bowl game yes. one. Yes. You get flights. Yes. You get tickets. Yes. Deluxe. Deluxe. Deluxe accommodations. accommodations. Rooster, Some Rooster swag, bag. swag bag. Yes. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And then you get to be around Nicole for the trip because... That's the that's she the plans cherry it on top. for you. That's all of your activities. Travel partners, travel partners. <laughs> ah, I take the credit there. Nicole. Yeah, but it's it's a lot of fun. So yes. and every week is a new chance to win. So every everybody week? register daily. Yeah. Um, it's a clean slate every week. Yeah. So so get on there, register mm-hmm. for it, and get a chance to go bowling with the Buckeyes yes. and, and Roosters. Guys, also something we need to talk about: Hit Purdue game is still on Peacock, correct? Mm, it is. It is. We have Peacock. Hey. So it's been working great. Um, huge shout out to our test it last weekend. IT guy. Yes, okay. we've tested in here. We were in here today just making sure it's all working. And so, yes, we have Peacock. So awesome. come in to watch the game. Check it out. And any other games you want to see. Save yourself Peacock. $7 from downloading it at home and come into Roosters yes. and get some great wings. Yes. Just spend that money on food. Exactly. And you might be able to save a couple bucks on Tuesday as well because Appetizer Three Thursday. Day. Is mac and cheese mac bites. and yes. cheese bites? They mm-hmm. are delish. There's no finer way to consume mac and cheese than it's the easiest, easiest way I found. I, I mean, mean, roosters really cracked good. I mean, they just like, <laughs> hey, just fry these bad boys. You get to use your hands. They're pretty amazing for so adults if, and kids. So if Firm doesn't finish them all off at the Olentangy River uh, location, there will be multiple baskets yes. available. They will be three dollars on Appetizer here. Thursday, and then on Peacock on Saturday at noon, Nicole has a. A prediction that is going to be accurate about what the score will be. I hope I've changed it Uh-oh. during the show, like multiple, multiple times. But I think I'm going to go with 43-21. I had 43-14. I think 43-21. 43-21. Yeah. Some more weirdness out there in West Lafayette. Yeah, we'll have Brad talk about what that experience was really like. Oh, I know we'll just cut him open and figure out <laughs> yes. those emotions uh, when we come back with the second half of the show. Anything else, Nicole? Did you change your score right there? She no, just, I, no, okay. I, I, right. I had I it scribbled out it. so many times. Okay. I've got to right. write the right one down. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about the 21 points given up to Purdue, yeah. but I know hey. and it might be. But it, I had hey, 14. I had 14, but I just Nicole's, I don't know. Nicole's got a history of, of 
crushing. I was the just game going with my matches. well. Sometimes now that we brought it up, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but um, that's just kind of like what my gut says. But we'll see. I think we are going to feel great next week. I really do. I think the guys learned a lot from this week, and we don't have a bye week to kind of you know you right into hang, it. into hang the gauntlet. Out. Yeah, into it's October. better to do that. Okay. Anything else? That's it. All Thanks, right. guys. Nicole's going to jump out of here. We're going to take a quick break, and we're going to be back in here in the Horseshoe Lounge at Roosters. It's a fun, casual joint. Roosters has been so fortunate. We just want to be able to give some of that back to the community. They donate to organizations that are near and dear to their heart, and we're so fortunate to have been with Roosters now for a long time. They always go above and beyond to help support our foundation to further help veterans. It's just a wonderful feeling to know that Roosters supports the Buckeye Crews for Cancer. All the folks at Roosters are just genuinely kind folks, and they want to make a difference. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters. Thank you, Roosters Foundation. Welcome back into Roost- Roosters. Roosters. In the- Roosters. Roosters. Liberty was howling like a wolf. She said she's a werewolf all weekend, so that's hey. obviously seeped into my brain. It's October. Uh, and then she's trying to figure out if either Allie or myself was where she got it from. And neither of us are werewolves, so I don't know. That's neither here nor there. Berm's here. I believe you have to be chosen oh, is that uh, correct? to be part of the werewolf uh, lifestyle. It's like, a, it's like a lichen gene. Oh, okay. I don't believe that it's something that you're born with. I think it's like she definitely you, volunteers. you choose it. She's got a pretty good howl. Yeah. Hmm. And well. she celebrated Ohio State's win by howling all Saturday afternoon, just like you did. Yeah, I didn't howl. You did. Too. At all. You did. Um, what are we doing? Oh, oh get, your my, get your buck, Eileen. I've been thinking about this all day, and there's only one one choice, and it's Jaden Felding. Is that the kicker? That's the kicker. Hey, he's been it's pretty the only, good. Yeah, it's the only choice? Hey, he's been legit. Right how much did I'll you, give him that. How much did you have on the cover, Burr? I'm going to tell mean, you right now. <laughs> he was sweating over that last field goal. No, honestly, it was the second quarter field goal when Ohio State has a chance to take the lead, and they bog down, they back up again, and that ball snuck in there, and that left upright just barely. But he's been so clutch Perfect all snap. year. Mm-hmm. He's been clutch all year. Um, you know, he's a young kid. He came in as a preferred walk-on. Doesn't get a lot of run. People get mad every time he's on the field, but yet he still just shows up and is doing his job. And uh, he hasn't kicked the ball out of bounds this year, which is a problem in the last handful of years. He mm, has made every field goal. Pretty sure he did. No, he didn't. At the end of the Notre Dame game. Prove it. They told him to. They told him to. That was not his <laughs> fault. That was because no one touched the ball. It was a scoop kick. Good coaching. Well, you, you could squib it down the middle, correct? And then, and but he was told not to. Squib. He was, Why would you, you tell them not to? Then. then you shorten the You want to corner them so everybody has to just run one area. I don't think area. he was squibbing it. The best part about that kick angle. is there's no winning for him. Like, no matter what, like, if you kick it down the middle, because you be like, why'd you kick right down the middle? Then you kick it like that, and yeah. it happens to go out of bounds. Yeah, so he's not, he's not doing? directed which way yeah. to kick it. It's like, pick your poison? No, he's directed, but, like, the coaching staff, like, if he were to kick it more down the middle with the squib and it didn't go out, they're going to yell at him. And He probably kicks it exactly how he wanted to. It's going to take some random bounces and goes out of bounds, and then they're still going to be mad. So there's no winning from that squip from the squip yeah. kick. Okay. Bottom line, uh, I think <laughs> that he he's doing the job that he's asked to do, and uh, as we found out on Saturday, and as we found out last year after your uh, injuries, like special teams, you, you really don't notice them until something is wrong. Uh, and right I, now, he's, I noticed he's been Brad did a great job. He's been the bright spot of the special teams unit this year. So uh, I feel like in this game, that second quarter field goal to tie it up was pretty big because all you got to do is turn on Saturday's college football around the country, watch ninety mm-hmm. percent of the games, and kickers are missing those kicks. So I snap at USC for a game winning yeah. field goal. So Man, kudos to him. What um, is USC doing? I don't. Mm. They're doing exactly what three over seven wins, boosting Heisman stats. That's Number one, doing. welcome to the big. They're team. doing exactly what everyone knew they do because their defense hasn't changed from a year ago, uh, and they are playing at two in the morning. So no one gives a crap that that happens because if they were Ohio State and Ohio State went to triple overtime to beat um, who's comparable to Arizona, mm-hmm. uh, well, Maryland, for example. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Doug Doug Liam Reese literally said that he called Arizona Desert Maryland. Yeah, I mean that's, <laughs> and that didn't happen to Ohio State. They won by twenty. I'm told. Yeah, they, so that seems like it. Should be fine. I, you look around the rest of the country, and it's become this like very popular talking point that there's no dominant team. All right, true or not true? Who, who knows? It's know, still Georgia looked pretty dominant on Saturday. Yeah, but they haven't in other games, and they mm-hmm. you know could have lost to Auburn and messed around in that game for a while. Like maybe that's true. We'll find out probably in a month's time how legitimate that actually is. We may still be talking about the same four or five programs going back mm-hmm. to the college football playoff when November rolls around. Uh, who knows? We'll see, but. It, it makes me think that perhaps there should be more appreciation for winning every Saturday. And I know that that's a hot take. 
But <laughs> college football How games are hard you. to win, Brad. I mean, How dare you? I, I'm sorry. It's funny because at the end of the day, if you said earlier, if you win every game, if you go 12 and 0 as Ohio State, you're gonna go to the Big Ten championship game and you're gonna be in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And you can win every game by one point or 40 points. At the end of the day, you just gotta get the win. It doesn't even matter. It could be the ugliest looking thing. Now, once you lose a game, they gotta start looking pretty because you gotta start boosting <laughs> your resume. Points, yeah. But that's hopefully this is the last year of that, and that's gonna change along with everything else. But yeah, at the end of the day, that's what I was thinking to myself. I'm like, all right, we won. Everything to me on film looks very fixable. But the problem in the past is things have always looked fixable, and they last too many weeks down the lo- down the line. Ostensibly, as a long snapper, you are an offensive lineman. Okay, so. How do you fix the offensive line? Because if if we're being honest, there's one problem Has that I've ever said that to you before. Good. No, but it makes sense. I look at this at this team and I see the, the problems that everyone else does. And I'm looking at the offensive line, and I had talked about it with Bill Landis on this morning's podcast too. I'm not sure the offensive line is fixable in this for this season. I don't you these guys are not going to magically become better at doing plays at, at achieving Goals on plays that they simply just don't look like they can run. So either you. But isn't that is, isn't I, that a coaching problem and not an offensive yeah. line problem? The but players we, here we are halfway through the year. It seems unlikely to me that the coaching staff is going to completely abandon what they what they've planned to do. So what's the fix? <laughs> well, personally, the only, it, Brad. The, the only two plays I've ever had to block for, one was a, uh, a schemed up one. It was a direct snap to Steel Chambers. That one went for 30 yards. Huh, came right up my gap. And then, hey, then the other one was to move his guy. guy. And then the other you one get was, up to the second level. We, we that, I, I, right had, I had to chip him and go to the second <laughs> level. But, and then the other one was uh, Jesse's wonderful punt that he decided to run last year. But – Oh, that was against Rutgers. Oh, that's right. But that, that one was a different experience because I didn't know I had to block anybody. It was one of those. I started running, and then I heard the crowd cheer, and I just think, oh, I threw this over his head or something. And then I turn because <laughs> like, you hear crowd cheer. It's easy. It's blocked or like maybe I messed up. And then I turn. You're not hoping and to I, hear that yeah, shit. And I just, yeah, and I just see the Australian kid running with the ball. Like, <laughs> like and I'm like, I'm like oh, yeah. I mean, so he, he, needs, he needs to work on the, you know, high and tight, keep it, yeah. keep it up there. But he was just running, and I was like, oh, my gosh. And then I get there, and then right in front of me, he gets absolutely destroyed. But maybe I could have blocked that guy better. He says that he got hit hard because I didn't go block the returner. How many like, yards did he get on that play? 22. So we were talking a career average of 26 yards per yeah. rush that you blocked on. <laughs> Seems to me like you know how to fix the offensive <laughs> yeah. line. Got to get to the second level. Uh <laughs> How how you get that done? I I don't I don't know. Um, I mean, stop running into your own players as you're that's, pulling. That's or blocking, blocking your own them. Players. Well, yeah, blocking yeah. your own players. And that and and the, the interesting thing about that is, I was I played O line a little bit in high school, and usually that's the get to the second level is your guards and center, and our guards should be the least question mark <laughs> guys on the team. And I and and I love both Donnie and Matt. And Donnie had a couple good plays where he pulled and abs- he lit a dude up. I was sitting next to his parents. He lit a guy up and. And from what I was seeing, it sucks because I was sitting in the first row, and you can't, you mm-hmm. can't. The vantage point of the game is not the same, there. right? But those yeah, are nowhere two near spots. the best seat in the house, like people would think. No, you know? it's you can't really see. I'm sure you feel the same thing. It's all about the gram. Pictures. Get the field in the background. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's you really would have thought like, hey, we'll have these two great guards and. They'll yeah. just keep getting better, and we haven't seen that. Yeah. They're not getting to the second level. Um, Carson's a young center, and I thought he'd be going in like, great. I have two veterans next to me, and it just hasn't been the case. And and I think I think you're right though. It's like, is there a, is there a true fix, or is yeah. it what do we do ske- like schematically? How do you, how do you to now avoid go it? get around yeah. it? One of the things I posited early in the season as a a potential problem for this team is I don't think that there's enough vocal leadership uh, in this team. And Donnie and Matt are prime examples of of this as in the offensive line. They are, you know, the best players on the offensive line, or they should be heading into the season. But they're also two kids that are extremely reserved and maybe not as vocal as you need someone to be to say, hey, this needs to get fixed. We're not doing this right. And I don't – Josh Fryer is not that way. Josh Simmons is a new guy in the program, comes in only in May. Like, Carson is from – Wisconsin. He's yeah. not a talker. Okay, he also, he he's a redshirt freshman. Right. He's he's this is his first year playing. He's, he's not expected to talk. I mean, like Luke Whipler was a young dude, and there was some veterans, but like, he's from New Jersey. Yeah, you knew but he, he was, was a gonna, talker. Yeah, mm-hmm. like he he was that. Paris um, is a talker. Yeah, Paris is a talker. Thayer, one of my best friends, quiet guy, but he didn't need to be a talker. He led differently, and that's fine. But 
I think that's a great point. It's like you look back when we've had the successful alliance, Josh Myers would talk when he needed to. It was a talker. And you had these guys that are fiery, like but Paris had Paris had a fire in him. Yeah. Luke Luke had that jersey, like I'll fight you if you say if you look at me wrong. Yeah. And, and you need that aggressiveness on the old line, especially in the Big Ten. You have it's a fight every game. It was a talking point three weeks ago from Justin Fry on the offensive line. They were gonna be be violent, be more violent. They came out and did it one game, and it seems like they have just retracted. Yeah. And that to me is just a major. Concern. I don't know how you fix it. I, I you can't force people to have different personalities. You can't. Midway through the season, force people to have different athletic traits. I mean, you can't really make changes personnel-wise right now because if you do, what are you setting up? I mean, Austin talked about it with Zach Bourne on Sunday Blitz. Like, maybe you have one week to to try something here mm-hmm. before you know heading into Purdue. But even then, like, you played at Purdue. It's weird, <laughs> yeah, right? It's, it's like, a weird environment. It's, it's, probably, gonna guys be, it's probably gonna be cold and windy. Yeah, and you want them to get experience probably in playing in well. games because yeah. they need it. Yeah. <clears throat> this isn't. This is going to sound like I'm arguing with Berm, and I don't mean it to, to you are. come across that okay. way. You're no, wrong, I, and I'm right. I, I'm not. I'm not saying anything that you believe about that is wrong. It's. I think the complicated part of figuring out the issue is that the pass protection has been pretty good, and Ohio mm-hmm. State's the best passing team in the Big Ten. Like that part of the offense seems. No quite, one. No one treats them that way, though. I saw that well, set the other day. I'm like, you'd think we were the worst. Yeah, and mm-hmm. well, because Kyle McCord threw six incompletions in the first half. Yeah. So. Yeah. He needs to be benched. So mm-hmm. there have been a couple sacks, and that's that's going to happen. I, I think the pass protection has been good. So when Ohio State is having this conversation, is it the personnel? They're set up to do what they do best. They're yeah. not getting yeah. blown away on the offensive line and incapable of handling a pass rush. They're doing a pretty good job of that. And when they're when the issues have popped up with the run blocking, like how hard is it really for opposing defensive coordinators to figure out where Ohio State's going to run the ball? And trying to get these five guys and Travion Henderson when he's been healthy to go like win in a phone booth with stretch into the boundary <laughs> is probably not the best use yeah. of their talent. Yeah. So but the only way you stop that is by making sure your offensive linemen block the two linebackers who are running free without being touched every again, time. Again, so, but, but I, I, your no, point's right. I mean, I'm not saying that, yeah, yeah, I'm not saying that they have executed the plays to yeah. perfection because clearly they have not. But we aren't seeing like a diversity of play calling to try and find well, what one would work well. In red zone situation, running to the field and letting Chip Trainum just run away from somebody, that's, that was effective. If you have better athletes, yeah. I mean, I, I'm not a coach. Yeah. I, say, I, I don't know the solution. I'm just speculating. I look at it at when you go into these third and ones, like at the end of the day, you, we have to have that chip on our shoulders. Like we're Ohio State. Like we should be able to get a third and one on 95% of the teams in college football just because we're better athletically. Mm -hmm. Like simple as that. And I look at that like, yes, we have great pass pro and that's what we do. But why don't we have both? It's Ohio State. Why don't we have both? And that's, and it's with when any issue comes up at any position, that's what I'm like. I think this is Ohio State. Like it shouldn't be a player issue. It shouldn't be a coaching issue. Like where's, like what's going on? Um, and, And that's where I look at it. But part of me thinks, we keep sticking to the same run plays, and it's gone out throughout the whole year. And those first three games were weird, where we didn't really get to feel out the run. Yeah. And I think we put a lot of the blame on the clock changes, where like later in the game we didn't have the opportunities to do more with the run game. And now it's like we're trying to play catch up and still establish the run with what our week one, week two like play design was on the run. And now it's just it. Whether it's part of me feels like it's weird with the clock changes that we're trying to still establish a run, but then we like when it does work well, we also pull away from it because we're worried about like not being able to score enough points because of the clock. And, and I think it's, it's probably just an excuse in, like, my mind. But sure. it's it's been weird since the start of the season, and that's my reasoning why we haven't changed anything yeah. up. I think it goes down to this idea, and, and you would know it as a quarterback playing in Ohio your whole life, you playing in the Big Ten. The game changes starting now, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah, the pass blocking has been pretty good. Um, I, I said it on snap judgments on Saturday that I thought the three sacks in the first half I would put almost – Probably all three of them yeah. on Kyle McCord. Kyle, yeah. Not on the offensive line. Were they great? No. Josh Fryer completely whiffed. And then yeah, Kyle should have got up in the pocket a little bit more on that you one. you got to climb and, yeah. and get yeah. rid of the football, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think the pass blocking has been good. But we are now entering middle of October in the Midwest, and you're playing against teams that are built to beat Ohio State. Ohio State, this is the conversation that happened all offseason. Ohio State is built to win a national championship. Michigan is built to beat Ohio State, right? So – Penn State is trying to build to beat Ohio State. You can't lose to both of them because if you do, you're not making the playoff. So how do you put makeup on the pig 
enough in the next couple of weeks. Well, that's the scary part because we Not just came out of sweets. a buy where we thought we yeah. would go get some makeup <laughs> and put it on that pig. Yeah. And then we came out and it wasn't that way. I mean, it, the tail is still showing. <laughs> it, it, it was rough and you didn't expect. Is that a curly pig If we're going to continue to run the same run plays, you got to learn how to block them or eat. Uh, to your point, maybe we just don't have the athletes that can run those plays. But then you got to say, all right, this is our self scout week. I mean, we, they went through and have done all that. Yeah, they just they had, had the they off had week, week off. It. You just had it. Yeah, there's no. That's, and you come I out with the same the stuff as the problem. Right? So is it? That has to be the biggest frustration. They came up the bar and looked worse. Yeah, yeah. and looked, took a step back. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm watching that first quarter, saying, "How did we beat Notre Dame?" <laughs> and with this, I mean, we're getting yeah. nothing. I, I said it here last week. I thought Maryland that was going to be a game in and a, a quarter, game, a quarter and a half. I get it. Quarter and a half. That game was going to be tied. I said this very specifically. Yeah. I think Maryland will stay in it for a quarter, quarter and a half, and that's how it played out. But Ohio State cannot do that in two weeks. If and you then, do that against Penn sure State, they, you sure are they down can. They just did it last year at Penn State. If you do yeah. that, yeah. Uh, we should. That's this Penn State team different. will have them down 14 to nothing or 17 to nothing instead of seen that before too. I don't think people should yeah. aim for that. Austin, <laughs> that's what I'm going with. Okay? But State, you're saying that they can't. Like they can I'm saying, very well do. I'm but. saying this offense is not constructed in a way yeah. to come back from 17 nothing against no. Penn State. No. In past Penn State, Austin won't like us talking about it, but you and me shared a similar opinion last week. Is we need to go to Madison, Wisconsin, yeah. and be able to run the football. Because right. they're going to slow that game down. We need to be able mm. to be controlled because Dominant it's not easy win to over play Rutgers there. too. Oh yeah. boy. Rutgers oh, yeah, looking, looking pretty good. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what's after that Penn State game or after that yeah. Wisconsin game? A road trip to mighty Rutgers. I yeah. think okay, you got to be able to. Prepared. You got to be able to run Shiano's. the ball then too. You don't think Shiano's going to try to keep the ball away from yeah. Ohio State with all the trickery and all that mm-hmm. stuff? Like this team is letting other teams dictate what they do, and well, that is really frustrating. I do agree with that part of it because. Again, and this also goes to this conversation about the offensive line. When Ohio State has been at its best, like Kyle McCord is really good in tempo. Mm-hmm. Teams having yeah. to adjust to this personnel mm-hmm. in the passing attack, like they're just not going to be able to do it. Yeah. And Ryan Day seems more comfortable with his play calling when they go tempo. Like It felt like in the first half that Ryan Day was a step slow, whether that was not understanding the seven and eight guys dropping the coverage mm-hmm. or when Maryland flipped the script and put eight in the box. He was like yeah. scrambling for what had happened before. So. If we want to say that part and just wrap it all up together, I'm, I'm cool with that. Yeah. I, but you have to decide if you think that it, the personnel is the issue or if you have to take some ownership of the play calling that's not putting them in a position. That's that's where I'm at. As, as the games get bigger, too, I think it's also really important that what's also looked bad is not that we're not scoring in the first half, but we're having a lot of three and outs or just one yeah. first down. So we're not even moving the ball. But then when we get to these big games against Penn State, against the team up north, our defense, who's been saving right now, they're going to be gassed because they're going to be on the field much more. And that's – luckily, it hasn't hurt them yet, but there was there was times where against Notre Dame, our defense yeah. looked tired. Tyler Quinn played three and 71 outs. plays against Maryland. Yeah. He's, he's not built to play 71 plays. He's not built plays. to play 71 plays. And uh, kudos to him. He, he, mm-hmm. He's played lights out. But he needs to get off the field some. JT2 Malowau needs to get off the field some. They, they actually took him off the field in the yeah. third quarter and, and put in Kenyatta Jackson opposite Jack Sawyer, which was refreshing. Like – there, there needs to be some allowance for the defense to catch its breath, and the offense is either scoring right away or going three and out, yeah. and then it, that's just a bad recipe. I just, it's just, again, I talked about it last week. Like, it's like, oh, would, how would this it, translate? They're all like, compounding issues, yeah. which is, I think, the bad thing to see is that it's well, if this goes wrong at the same time that goes wrong, it could get ugly quick. Yeah, for sure. What would you guys say do you, is your feeling on just calling the plays? Well, I, I was I was literally literally just literally? going to mention it, we we don't talk much about the loss of Kevin Wilson, right? Kevin Wilson up in the box, he was great. Would probably have been a little bit more proactive on Saturday, saying, "Hey, this is what they're doing in the yeah. first quarter. Let's make changes." And I'm not sure that having Mike Soleni and Keenan Bailey um, and, and Corey Dennis upstairs is is recognizing that, same, that enough. That same feeling, and so. I think that there are some of those issues maybe mm-hmm. that need to be worked out. I, I don't I don't care if Ryan Day's calling the plays or Brian Hartline's calling the plays. I'm just curious. I think you know how much he was letting Brian, you know, do his I own just think thing. that yeah. you're maybe missing some of that veteran like presence upstairs to say, Hey, this is what's happening. Let's adjust. Maryland allowed Ohio State to th- dink and dunk in that first half. And we talked about it after the game, like or if, it seemed like Maryland assumed Ohio State would adjust in the second half mm-hmm. and then decided to pack the box instead of Doing what they continue to do, like I didn't understand that. So they went from like 
drop so eight. They had two different game yeah. plans. Yeah. This, yeah. First half, second half, and they just went with it. They <laughs> barely <laughs> changed theirs. And okay, then, yeah. <laughs> because they thought Ohio State wouldn't. Ohio State was like, nah, we're just <laughs> no, we're good. We're good. <laughs> so I thought that was interesting. I, I, I do think that there's some some issues yeah. there because you are relying on on fresh eyes up there that haven't maybe been in that position before. So. There's all these little things that are stacking up, but then you go back to, well, you won by 20 yeah. against a pretty oh, good team who is, uh, you know, Joel Klatt said it on TV after I did the rewatch, like Maryland's the fourth best team in the Big Ten right now. So it should have been ranked. Whew. Is that good enough to beat Michigan or Penn State? That's the question, that's really and the answer is probably not. Nope. So you got – you know, 12 days. I think the Coach Wilson things something. I, I mean, I've, I was a big Coach Wilson fan. I was close with him. Well, you're an but offensive lineman. Yeah. You got to work with him all the time. <laughs> but I didn't even think about that because nothing against the new guys that are up there. But you, Coach Wilson has years and years of experience, right. one as a play caller, one as a head coach, yep. just general football knowledge. And it's not even about halftime uh, yep. adjustments because I'm sure Coach Day has a lot to do with halftime it's adjustments. Game, so. and all. It's that <laughs> after the first series, like, all right, we just, <laughs> yeah. went th- we just had a three and out. Like, what exactly happened? We didn't, we didn't get, get the that. look we were thinking we were yeah. going to get. This is what they did. Let's mm-hmm. go ahead and change things up. Just real quick. And I think missing that, because I was just thinking about that when you first said his name. I'm like, who's even up there? And then yep. he, he answered the question. But it's I think that's actually probably the biggest change and they haven't worked out how to get – Past yeah. that, yeah, <laughs> lots it's, of things, lots of fun things to talk yeah. about. Super fun. The spread this week is the exact same. Right now, Ohio mm-hmm. State is favored by nineteen and a half at Purdue. So let's do the same thing that we did for Maryland. What is your concern level that Purdue, which pulled off a major upset in twenty eighteen, if anybody was aware or around for that, uh, how painful that was to cover to and, watch. And, and and to dodge the flying there, yeah. trash cans. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if that happened on the sideline the way it did for Byrne before the game where he almost died. Um, Life before. What's, what's the concern level that you have knowing that things can get wonky at Purdue? Like, Brad? like for the – like to win? Like we're talking well, just tell me what your or? concern – no. Your concern level for the game, period. You can answer it however you want, Byrne. But Brad's going to start. I mean, it's it's a weird environment. I mean, when we in 2018, like that was Tyler Trent's night, and that was an amazing story. Mm-hmm. And, and like that's why at the end of the day, I'm oh. not even mad about that looking back because that's such an amazing thing that happened. It was also it was a night game. They packed that place. It was actually pretty loud. It was ABC primetime night game. The environment there is weird because you change, and it feels like when you go from the locker room to the field, it feels like you're in high school because you're just walking across concrete yep. like with fans around. And there's there's a couple of Big Ten stadiums like that. In Maryland, you're in a tent sometimes. Penn State's <laughs> weird, but it's it's still the Northwestern. It doesn't it doesn't yeah Northwestern. I it's it's awful, but it so it doesn't feel the vibe doesn't feel right. And then the weather's going to be the biggest thing. I think is it supposed to rain or it's rain in the morning? Yeah, it's supposed luck, to be like 55 and yeah. and rain in, in the early part of the day. All right. Luckily, it's a noon game, so there won't. I don't think the crowd will be a factor. It's just, do we wake up for a noon game, which was kind of what I thought may have been the issue this past weekend. But we also have to figure that out real quick because Penn State's at noon. So I don't. I don't have. Uh, I think. I think I have a confidence factor of like one that I'm worried. Like okay. I think we. I think we we win, but I'd love to see a fast start. That's what I'm worried about not happening with the weather and the noon and just the type of game it's going to be. Okay. I can yeah. Get there. I don't. I don't worry about getting a win there. I, I, I agree with that. I would like to see a start fast, look like the team that we think we are. Uh, but in the end, we go on the road in the Big Ten, and you get a game. You, you know, say we cover yeah. twenty points, I'll take it. You know, forty to twenty, whatever. Let's just get in here and get out of here. But you know, <laughs> you would like to just see to get a better feeling for the bigger games coming down the road. That all right. Yeah, we're, we're getting better. Do you remember two thousand and two at Purdue? Were you? Yeah, I mean, yeah, holy Buckeye. It's one of it, you guys played in two very different types of yeah. uh, we results lost out there in 04, too. Yeah, I mean, it, it's iconic for different reasons. Ohio State has lost four times mm-hmm. at Purdue in the last twenty years, which is more than any other any other Big Ten school. Oh, uh, it sounds like Burns at a ten. Sounds like he's I at a ten. I, I just can't get there. Yeah, I mean, we're ramping up. I'm not worried about it. I I think I would be more worried per se if this game was at home i think the fact that you're on the road allows you to sort of switches things up a little bit but does that apply to west lock yeah i think it does because you're still you know it you guys like being on the road where people hate you right yeah it's it's fun to be the villain and that was like the first thing i realized because i grew up north of the border uh i liked ohio state like in the aj hawk years but (laughs) but But it was one of those things like I love going back home now and wearing my my scarlet and gray and just being the villain. It's it's hilarious. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, nothing's better than when you go play at Penn State and there's 
there's families like kids flicking you off like as you're busting in like it feels yeah. great so i think there is that that road edge you you don't have to worry about your family and like getting all the tickets and people wanting to hang out with you on friday night like i think you are able to get a little bit more ready mentally for the game uh, for a, especially a noon game on the road because you wake up there's no one else to bother you you just get to go to the stadium and get ready uh, weather always concerns me especially for a young quarterback that hasn't had any experience playing in it, uh, you know, briefly on Saturday, but I think every time it rained on Saturday, Maryland had the ball, so it was kind of weird. Not saying Kyle doesn't have small hands or anything; he's not Joe Burrow. Um, so I, I think that <laughs> you grew up in Philly, the weather there. Yeah, that's, I, look, I look at where they grew up, where like CJ was a, a California kid, yeah. so, like so I'm not worried about that. Bad weather. Um, I, I think the biggest concern for me is just knowing that. Purdue is going to throw the kitchen sink at the offensive line and see how they respond. Uh, I, my score prediction, I will, I'll give it later in the week, I'm sure. But I, early thoughts, a I'm different thinking, one. He'll give I'm later thinking like week. 31 to 10, something like that. I don't see Purdue scoring often. Uh, Hudson Card's a good quarterback. Um, you know, played at Texas. Obviously, good enough to get a scholarship to Texas. Was one of the higher ranked kids in the country in that class, but. I don't think they have the weapons. You, there's no Rondale Moore to save you. Mm-hmm. There's no David Bell on this team. There's nobody on this offense that you look at and you're like, oh, man, that, that dude's terrifying. So I don't worry about that. I, I think the biggest – So disrespectful. I think our defense Purdue. has been like, playing so well. It's all about Ohio State. keep us in the game. It's, it's about, <laughs> how does our offense thing, look is the one thing that's – It's about Ohio State. We're going to come out of this. And is Ohio State yeah. ready to, to turn up? Yeah. I think that 31 is pretty accurate with the weather. Yeah. Like, just because there's no, the run game's not there. We're not hitting home. Like, Trey had the one run against Notre Dame, but there's not the big home run plays at running back. And in a weather game, a big time. Well, Purdue has changed that. their field. It's not grass anymore. So that will make it a Ooh, little so bit. So they're not going to be. You don't have to worry as much about the wet, sloppy, long grass or anything like that. So there is a little bit of advantage that they maybe you guys didn't have in 2018. We had no turf in 18. Was it? Oh, yeah. I thought it was grass then. No, it was turf. Wait. I it was grass. It might have been grass. I think it was I'll grass. try and think. Either way, I didn't uh, know they Rondale were Moore had no really problem with the grass. No, he, yeah. he had no problem with yeah. anything that night. <clears throat> Sean Wade did. Um, <laughs> yep. I, I guess I'm at, you know, 10 out of 10 because I respect every Ohio State opponent to the max. Um, it's I tough to play in the Big Ten. Yeah, yeah. Someone's just tough in the SEC. On the road. Like, I mean, it's this is the best conference in America, and it you go that. on the road and play them, like, you take them seriously. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm, frankly, I, I'm embarrassed that Burma is being so disrespectful. I'm going to give it like a two, a two. Oh, as far as worry of like P- Purdue winning the game. There we like go. Two. It's going to be know. your fault, Berm. Yeah. I'm not going to take the blame for that this week. Yeah, you're a 10. He's a two. Sorry. I'll eat give, all the crow if, 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 if people want to. I was told to eat crow for last week. I predicted 41 to 17. Listen. Okay, just, what is this? And, what and are we told to eat like? Crow? What am what? I supposed to be upset about or, or apologize yeah. for? Yeah. Your, what did I pick? Your Burm? prediction flies in the face of your uh, of of everything you said all week. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. I was very complimentary of the unbeaten Maryland Terrapins. I said it every single time I talked about. It. <sighs> Goose. How can Mike I? Loxley's what was going so, on over there? If I pick from, forty-one to seventeen, awesome. what? How, what did I? What am I supposed to apologize for? Cousin, you did great. So what do you got? I think, I think that's a great pick, wasn't it? So what's your early prediction for this one? Forty-one to seventeen. But you t- you got a ten. See, that doesn't match up then. <laughs> well, sometimes I lie. Yeah, <laughs> that's the issue. Yeah, <laughs> it is true. Sometimes I say things I don't mean, and there may be some sarcasm. Yeah, a little bit. I, I mean, I think going on the road to Purdue is probably more challenging to get up for than at home against Maryland. I. I there's a, there's a greater chance, I think, of it being closer this week than, than it was on Saturday. And mm-hmm. that's, no, the first half did not transpire the way I envisioned it on Saturday. I would agree with that if this Saturday didn't happen. I, I would, if you just lined them up and looked at it and said, okay, we got this game or this game, which one's going to be easier to get up for? I would agree with you, Maryland would be, but now that this first 10, 15 minutes happened against Maryland, mm-hmm. I think that the team will not yeah. have that problem again. Yeah. That's, that's a good way to look at it. You're almost, you're almost positive of how it happened. Like, it, well, you're positive they until they don't learn from it. Yeah. Like, so hopefully, like, they learn from that first quarter, just <laughs> getting up for it, the, the mistakes, the special teams yeah. issues. The yeah, they, didn't, they didn't be fold. Aggressive. They kept yeah. going. Come out yeah. and be aggressive. Yeah. You are the superior team. Come out yeah. and Show throw it. punches. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think that's where, where I'm at with this with offensive line or anything else. Like, sometimes Ohio State doesn't coach like it has the better yeah, personnel. Like, mm-hmm. Like, and it's making it easier for other teams to stay in the game. Yeah. Like, just go out and be yourself. I think that I've said it over and over. Like, so if, if you are a passing team and you have Marvin Harrison and Mecca Buka, 
Probably throw to him. Maybe so, throw, throw to him. So to quote Urban Meyer, because like I said earlier, like we're Ohio State, like there shouldn't be these issues, like like issues with personnel and stuff. Like you have to have that confidence. And he would say this all the time, and I used to laugh at it. But like now, thinking about, it, I'm like, damn, he was right. It was you. It was every game's a big game, and he would like ask people. He goes, you know why it's a big game? He goes, because we're in it. That's all that matters. Mm. He goes, he goes. So we have to act like we're us. Everyone's expecting to play the Ohio State. You have to act like it. But he was always he was always big about respecting the opponent. He did a good job of that. But then he goes, it's only going to be a big game. Because because we're there. It's it's our name, our brand. You have to play like it. You got to coach like it. Wow. So, I like that. That's true. Yeah, looking is. back now, I have a different different view on that. Before I was like, what is he saying? Like <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like some it'd be the Youngstown State game at noon. And I was, I'm like, what? It's a good <laughs> thing you weren't game. a kicker though. <laughs> you know, you, if you were a kicker, he would have kicked you once oh, and yeah. told you to kick like a girl. Yeah. You probably would have cried about it. Yeah. <laughs> Keep talk. That tells me that we have reached the end of the road in the horseshoe <laughs> lounge at Roosters. <laughs> so before we why do Start kickers singing. cry so much? Yeah, I, Good Lord, kickers. Most little guys. Get over it. Yeah. Well said, Berm. <laughs> uh, thanks to Nicole Cox and Sick Roosters for kickers. having us. Peacock. But uh, you gave your buck, I leave the one. Oh, he earned it. Because <laughs> he now. hasn't cried about anything. Yeah. <laughs> the game is on Peacock, and Roosters has it. So come hey. Saturday at noon for Ohio State and Purdue. Come for Appetizer Thursday. Mm, mac and cheese bites. Mac and cheese bites. Don't forget to uh, scan that QR code and register for the Roosters Bowl Trip Giveaway. Thanks to Nicole. Thanks to Jay-Z. Thanks to Bradley Robinson. Thanks to Berm. Appreciate you joining and joining us and watching. We'll be back again next Monday. Enjoy Ohio State at Purdue. See you then.